Tani here and welcome back to my channel. In my last video, I was wearing a wig and um, that's because I filmed that earlier today. And since I do have the white background and the beat makeup, I put on my other wig. Is this going through an identity crisis? Maybe, but I'm gonna rock it. No, honestly though, I wanted to see how I would look like with short hair, because I'm cutting my hair. We're as you can tell by the title of this video, we are going to be exposing slash revealing our subscribers' summer secrets. I did another Google form, but I honestly have no idea how many I decided to choose. I have no idea how many I chose. I just have a bunch here, so I'm just gonna read them to you guys. So here is the first secret. I have a major crush on my best friend's crush, almost boyfriend, and I don't know how to cut off my feelings for him. Every time he doesn't text back or ignore her, I get happy. Girl. <laughs> I'm such a bad friend. Any advice? You should be straight up with her about how you feel. So if you ever do, let's say in like an alternate universe, they start dating and they don't work out and you get with him. Because I get there's girl rule and stuff, but you can't help who your feelings for. So I feel like if you talk to her, sit her down and be like, hey, you are my best friend. I just want to let you know that I kind of have a crush on him too. And talk about it. That's all you can really do. So talk about it, please. This one is kind of long, so let's start. Warning, this is very sad. Okay, so two summers ago, my family went to Argentina for the best vacation ever. I wish, I've never traveled. While we were there, my brother had met a girl he liked and he wanted to keep in touch with her so they exchanged phone numbers. The day before we went back on our plane, our brother ran away with that girl. Or so we thought. It turns out he stayed behind and went to Brazil. And he called telling us he was safe. Okay, well, at least he's safe. But we haven't heard from him since and I'm so sad. Is he still with the girl? Or was he like, oh, I ran away with the girl, but he's actually just like running away? I, I'm actually very confused about that. I wish him the best. I stayed home all day and gained 20 pounds in a week. Me. This one is very long, so uh, grab a snack, maybe some Maltesers, some chips and dip, even some nachos, like oof, I could go for some nachos. My ex-girlfriend and I broke up last summer. I still feel bad for it because I lied to her. Boy, what you lying about? I still loved her. I actually feel like a terrible person because I told her that I cheated on her. The thing is, is that isn't true. Out of all the things you could have said, you chose cheating. I'm not that kind of person. I was just afraid to tell her that I actually just broke a promise that I did to her. Therefore, this summer, by a happy or unfortunate event, I met her again in vacation in Montreal, where I used to live. Obviously, she wasn't that happy to see me, considering that, well, I told her I cheated on you. All I wanted to do was shout, I still love you, and tell her the truth, but I didn't want to throw it out there and have her be even more angry at me. So I decided to gain in a better relationship with her first, and I wanted us to be at least decent friends before I told her the truth. This is getting juicy. Oh my god. Okay, so the sentence is worded weirdly, but basically he promised her that he'd never move again, but he was moving again. So he told her he was cheating on her so they could end the relationship so he could move. But honey, you gotta be honest with your significant other. We once broke up because of it, but it would have killed her knowing that I was moving once too many times. And cheating on her didn't kill her. Sorry, I'm, I'm, oh. Now I just hope she took the cheating stuff better than me breaking a newly made promise. You broke the promise of your relationship. That's cheating. I'm sorry, cheating is not the answer. After a while, we became friends once more. Okay, good news. Still, there was that awkwardness between us. It's even more present now that after what happened last night, we were actually chilling at my house, waiting up for our friends to come over when we had that weird deep eye contact. She didn't say anything and I couldn't help it but to look at her beautifully shaped mouth, remembering what we used to have before me everything up. Yet, hoping it would work, I slowly leaned in to kiss her. As I was approaching, she didn't react, so I thought maybe she would forgive me and agree to a long distance relationship after I told her the truth. After a long ass time, I decided to go for it and kiss her. She slapped me. 
Well, shit. I'm sorry that didn't work out because you seem like a good guy and you technically didn't do anything wrong. You know, like it's not like you actually cheated on her. Try not to make any romantic moves because that really won't help. Because right now the last thing she wants is a romantic relationship. Even though she wasn't cheated on thinking for a while that she was cheated on, probably like messed up with her and she just needs some alone time. Okay, I need to breathe. But I wish you the best, dude. So when I was 13, I was having a teenage crisis. I feel you on that. But anyways, I decided I'd run away from home over the summer. So I went in the middle of the night to a holiday resort next to my house and stayed the night. My parents called the cops and let's say I was grounded for eternity. I can see why. I sold nudes on a mega lot of boredom. Made 15 bucks that night. That one had me so shook because I remember being like 12 going on a mega talking to strangers with my friends and like giggling at the weird guys. But people actually sold nudes. What's on there? Like what? This one's long too. <laughs> one of my craziest summers was actually the last one. So I went to the hairdresser to get my hair dyed and it costed 150 bucks. I get home and it's been around one day now since I've dyed it. So I go to the pool because it's summer, right? So the weather is super hot. So I obviously at this point am dumb as f <laughs> me. I go swimming and my hair dye is staying in. I keep checking my hair to see if it's still got the dye in it. After the swim, I head home and I go take a shower. I wash my hair and the dye comes trickling down my arm and it stained the bathroom floor. My mom would kill me. I get out of the shower and dry my hair with a towel, look in the mirror and the dye is all washed out. I would cry. So I'm having a panic attack by this stage and I don't know what to do about my situation. So I quickly get the window cleaner out of the cupboard and scrub the shower floor trying to remove the dye. Oh my God, I'm feeling anxious for you. It is stained and I can't remove it. This is one of the most embarrassing things I did. So I went into my room, I got my acrylic art paints, the white color, and began painting over the dye. You're joking. It starts to work, so I'm less worried now. I get my hair dryer and I dry the paint. Everything is all right and nobody knows the truth. Dude, why is that something I would do? When I was a kid, I used to draw all over the walls. At the end of it, I would be like, insert brother's name did this. <laughs> past few days, I started creating a fake Snapchat account to stalk my ex-boyfriend and what he's currently doing in his life. That is the worst thing you can do. If you are trying to get over an ex, do not stalk them. Live your best life. Remind yourself how it's like to be single and thriving. I've seen his other Snapchat stories and I've asked him if he's had a girlfriend and he said yes. He's hella taken. At that moment, my stomach dropped and I hurt so much that I couldn't breathe anymore. The reason why I did that is because I miss him. I felt that. <laughs> And I want to realize that I really did love him even after those times of disagreements and petty arguments we had last year. Oh. The one thing that happened last night when I was talking to him on Snapchat was that he knew who I was all along. Oh. Ah, I feel like secondhand embarrassment for you. I'm so sorry. He ain't worth it, sis. I don't have one, but I want to see other people's. Me. Okay, this is the last one, you guys. In high school, I sold quite a bit of weed. My friend would usually drive me around to make deliveries. One time I had a large chunk on the center console, probably three grams or so. I turned around and it was gone. This is when we realized her wiener dog must have eaten it. I called poison control. It was hard to hide her laughter. I'm pretty sure they thought we were high at the time. Is the dog alive? Considering I couldn't find that many summer secrets, I decided to share a fun little summer story time with you guys. So there was this piece of land that my family and I would go to during the summer where there would be like soccer tournaments and there's a pool and beach volleyball and stuff. And I remember when I was like nine years old, I went into the pool. Now, anybody that knows me knows I am not the greatest swimmer. I know how to swim. I know how to do all this and backwards and, and that. But um, if I had to swim to save my life, I would die. Because when I start to swim, when my feet can't touch the ground, I start to low-key panic, which makes me a bad swimmer. So that, in my adulthood, stems from half moon when I was a kid. So I remember jumping in the pool, and I'm nine years old, you know, so I can't hold my breath for long. I jump into the pool. In the deep end, I'm swimming up like I could already feel in my chest that I need to take a breath of air. And then all of a sudden, but I'm internally freaking out right now. <sighs> All of a sudden, I was looking up with my goggles swimming and I see a body coming at me, coming my way as I'm going up and they smashed my head. They did it. So basically the person did a cannibal right on top of me and they landed on me and pushed me right back 
to the bottom of the pool out of air my nose was all bloody and I couldn't breathe so I started struggling really bad trying to swim up really bad but I started to breathe in water and then out of nowhere I felt someone lift me up and it was my sister jumping in to get me because she knew I had been underwater for a long amount of time I still wasn't up and she saw that girl hit me so I came out of the pool like trying to breathe my face was all bloody because she hit my nose so hard because she landed on my face. Luckily, I didn't break my nose. I didn't break my cheekbone or anything, but I was all bloody. I could barely breathe and the Loki traumatized me. But my sister saved me, man. I love you, sis. That was some scary shit. I would have, I don't even know what would happen. Because like the whole process of jumping in and then landing, jumping out, I'd like already run out of air. And the fact that I got pushed down again and the deep end was so deep, I still had to swim up for another like 10 seconds. Like I feel like I could have possibly drowned. I don't know. But luckily there were people in the pool. Luckily my sister saw me. But that kind of traumatized me with swimming pools and swimming too deep underwater. Which is why if I go to a beach, because in Canada it's just lakes, no oceans. If I go to a beach and I start to swim to the deeper parts where my feet stop touching the floor, I don't go past that. If I can like bounce a little and my head goes underwater to touch the floor, okay. But to have like a huge gap between, I like can't do it even though I know how to float, I know how to swim. I can't do it psychologically because it happened when I was a kid. That was so scary. That's my little summer story. <laughs> it's kind of dark, but hey, I'm alive, so we're fine. But guys, those are all the summer secrets I have to share with you for today. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure to smash the thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe right down below. I love you guys so much and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Mwah.